Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rose Blood Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Welcome. Today I'm going to tie for you a pattern that came out of New Zealand, oh, at least 20 years ago. It's a style, actually. Matuka is the name of it. And the New Zealanders love to fish these for their big brown trout. This is a bait fish type of a pattern. Previous video I tied a slump buster, and the slump buster uses some of the same techniques that came from the Matuka, only the slump buster uses pine squirrel zonkers, and here we're going to be using actually some feathers from a rooster saddles soft hackle chickaboo that we, that we carry. This happens to be an olive, a grizzly dyed olive. And the grizzly part is important. The lateral line of a fish really shows up um, with that grizzly pattern on it. To put the feathers together, you actually need two sets two pairs of feathers, one on each side. I pre-prep these feathers in the pairs by getting two feathers of the same size, holding them so that I have a shank length feather. I strip off the bottom, not everybody does. I like to tie it down flat to the fly. And then by using a little bit of tear mender, just putting a tiny bit here on the bare quills and letting it set, it glues those together. That way I can tie in both pairs or both sets at the same time. So this is something you can pre-prep your fly with and save yourself some time. So besides that, besides the hackle, we've got some peacock sparkle braid, a little bit of red wool, um, some lead wire, and I think I'm going to put a collar on this one before we finish it. Well, let me show you how I'm using our old friend 3x long streamer hook this happens to be a size 6 you can tie these anywhere from a size 2 down to a size 12 and it's in the smaller sizes they actually make an excellent wet fly hook weighting is optional but to me a bait fish that's not close to structure isn't really doing its job so I'm going to put 20 wraps of 0.025 lead on here if you take this right off the spool, you'll save yourself quite a little bit of waste. Always make sure that you have room at the head and room at the back of the fly to tie in your materials. If you need more lead, then double it up. All right. Let's tie this lead down. This is six aught vivas in a light olive. So for the ribbing, we're going to be using some small olive sized ultra wire. I'm going to go ahead and use this gap here between the back of the lead and the back of my fly to tie these materials in to try to use up a little bit of that gap. And this is the Sparkle Braid Peacock. Again, trying to use up some of this gap. And then we'll go ahead and bring our thread forward right in front of the wire. a nice smooth body. Now for the underbody you can use any number of things. You can use wool, chanel, you can dub it. There's really no limit to what you can do but this adds a little bit of sparkle without being obnoxious. Right up to there. it's tight. Then I'm going to tie in a small piece of our short length of red wool. This is supposed to imitate the gills of a bleeding bait fish and predators do respond to red. There's no doubt about that. Just one wrap there. All 
All right, now our paired feathers, like I say, are prepared ahead of time. The feathers should be facing in towards each other. You want to make sure that the tips are lined up like this. And by preparing them in pairs in advance, it makes this a whole lot easier. I like to have this about one hook shank length longer than the hook. This is actually a little too long. Turn a little bit more off. Okay, here I'm going to separate the feather, tie it down with a few snug wraps. Make sure that this is right at the end of your hook shank. And then separate the hackle. And just like with the slump buster, I'm going to be using the wire to tie this down in segments. Keep it nice and tight. Make sure you keep that hackle on top of the hook shank. If not, then you're going to have a fly that twists. Move forward. They don't uh, dampen the feathers. Keep them apart. It's actually a very simple pattern to tie and pretty quick if you get your hackle feathers prepped. But lots of color combinations. If I can ever get some of this grizzly dyed hackle in orange, you can bet I'll be tying a crayfish pattern. Even in uh, gray for bait fish. Bring this forward. right to where our thread is. Put these quills off. Now I'm going to come back in here and make a bit of a collar using the same feathers. I'm going to tie this in by the base so I get the benefit of the larger hackles. I'm going to unwrap this here. your thread back over it to secure it. And then wrap this back to the thread. I think the collar is also optional, but I think it adds a little bit of movement, extra movement to the fly. Doesn't have to be a dense hackle. And bring your thread back through the hackle to secure it. You always want to do that. Take off the extra. And then pin these back a little bit with thread wraps. Nice thread head thread head on there. We'll whip finish it. But if you're looking for something different, if you're tired of the articulated monsters and the trimmed deer hair heads and all of that, the Matuka is a nice fly with a little different profile, something that maybe the fish here haven't seen for quite a while. So give it a try. There's the Matuka from New Zealand. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.